pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Pursuant to Section 5, Chapter 231, Public Laws, 1975, this is to state for the record that adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the public by posting and maintaining the annual notice of regular meetings on the bulletin board of the Municipal Building, by mailing the annual notice of regular meetings for 2013 to the news record in Star-Ledger in December 2012, and by filing said notice in the office of the Township Clerk. Mr. Branley. Here. Mrs. Larrier? Here. Ms. Leventhal? Here. Mr. Ryan? Here. Mayor DeLuca? Here. Whereas Chapter 231, Public Laws of 1975, commonly known as the Open Public, public Meetings Act, requires that all meetings of public bodies be open to the public. Whereas Section 7 provides that the governing body has a discretion to permit, prohibit, or regulate the act, act of participation of the public at any meeting. And whereas are this governing body to comply with the provisions of this act, same time to conduct its business in an orderly and expeditious manner. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Township Committee, Township Maplewood, that is hereby prohibit, except to set forth in a formal agenda, active participation in the deliberations of the governing body by the public, and except as otherwise prescribed by law, does limit the public to the observation of the actions and discussions of the governing body at all of its regular and special meetings. So moved. Second. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mrs. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Again, we apologize for getting out here late. We um, were doing some interviews earlier and had to uh, get through those. And then we also had to discuss something before we came out here. So uh, I'm going to go through what's on the agenda, give you a heads up as to where uh, you might want to participate if you're here for certain things. And then um, we will start the meeting. So first, uh, we're going to do uh, some appointments. We have an appointment to the Historic Preservation Commission, and then we also have some appointments to the trans, I'm sorry, not the trans, Environmental Advisory. Uh, then after that, we're going to have a public comment uh, session if anyone wants to address the Township Committee. Now, if you're here for Woodland Road, that would not be the time to speak. The time to speak on Woodland Road is when I call that ordinance, which would be item number seven on the agenda. I'll ask if anyone wants to speak on this ordinance, and that would be the time for folks to come up and speak about Woodland Road. But if you want to speak about anything else, that first public comment period, number six, would be the time for you to come up and speak to us. Then, uh, so then we go to our ordinances. So we have the ordinance on final passage, which is Woodland Road. Uh, we have the ordinance on final passage, which dissolves the Transportation Authority, uh, uh, Advisory Committee. We have another ordinance on final passage which sets up a merchant parking program on Springfield Avenue, on parts of Springfield Avenue. Then we're going to be introducing two new ordinances, one permitting the employment of off-duty police officers and another um, to uh, reaffirm the appropriate authority for the Maplewood Police Department. After that, we'll be doing, dealing with a resolution establishing the sewer rate for 2013 and then we have three discussion items. We'll be talking, and we're going to do this in reverse order. Uh, we're going to talk about the budget first. Then we'll talk about the Maplewood Pool opening up on um, Memorial Day weekend. And lastly, the financial aid program for pool membership. We have a consent agenda, which is a series of resolutions um, uh, applying for a grant, uh, receiving bids, um, some minutes and doing a, a interlocal agreement with Milburn on uh, stormwater management. We then will move into our second public comment period. If anyone's still around or anyone's watching us on TV that wants to come down later, we'll have a second public comment period uh, and folks can talk to us again. We'll have administrative reports, reports from elected officials, and then we will adjourn. So the first uh, item is going to be item number five, boards and committee appointments. And Mrs. Larrier, would you deal with historic preservation? I certainly would. Um, 
Mr. William Parrish, would you please come up to the podium? And I would, I would like to, I would like to uh, request that we appoint. I am. I'm sorry. I'd like to request that we appoint Mr. William S. Parrish Jr. to the Historic Preservation Commission. Mr. Parrish comes to us as the chairman, uh, I'm sorry, chief executive officer of Noble Strategy Con uh, Construction Management Company. And if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, um, who you are, where you live, and, and what your background is a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, so I live in Maplewood, 91 Hudson Avenue, uh, with my lovely family, Jennifer, my wife. Uh, my daughter, Lika, is over there studying, uh, so she doesn't have to do it at home, and my son is not here. But uh, we've been in Maplewood since uh, 1998. Uh, certainly enjoy living here, enjoy the town, and have been very active in the town. My background is in construction management. Uh, undergraduate degree was building construction technology. Uh, graduate degree is management of technology. Undergraduate from Hampton University, management degree from uh, Polytechnic University of New York. And I have been working in the construction management industry uh, in New York and New Jersey primarily since uh, 1988. Um, about 25 years. Uh, I've worked for several agencies including uh, New York City School Construction Authority, um, Economic Development Authority for the state of New Jersey, uh, and also Newark Public Schools, where I was the director of design and construction, managing 86 buildings, uh, 40 new schools, and 30 major renovations as part of a $1.6 billion long-range facility plan. That was in 2002. I uh, worked there until 2005, and I decided to leave the district and start my own firm. And I have been uh, growing Noble Strategy, a uh, full-service construction management firm, focused on program and project management, sustainable design and construction practices, and emerging contractor development and training. Uh, we have an office in uh, Newark, New Jersey. We also have an office in Harlem, New York. and. Uh, we do a great deal of public agency work for uh, Dormitory Authority, State of New York. We also work for uh, Brick City Development Corp in Newark. We worked for Essex County. Um, we have uh, a whole host of agency clients as well as community development partners, nonprofits, and some private work. And um, really been interested in historic preservation as a driver. Uh, to economic development and activity uh, <coughs> in cities and urban centers uh, using the historical sites and the historical assets uh, that are in most of these cities uh, that sometimes are forgotten. Uh, there, there is a good opportunity there to drive development. Uh, and not in the, I guess, new sense development, but in the traditional sense where you're making use of uh, what exists, uh, a bit of adaptive reuse, and uh, really, really creating a benefit for the community uh, and preserving the assets that are intact and making certain that they're intact. Uh, I have had an opportunity to uh, participate on the uh, Historic Trust Commission for the State of New Jersey uh, during uh, Governor Corzine's administration. Um, there's an asterisk to, there, to that. Uh, I won't get into that uh, having to do with it. I was appointed uh, by Governor Corzine. And uh, I did have a chance to work uh, with the Township Committee on siting the new police station several years ago on Springfield Avenue. Uh, and then there was, a squat, dis there was a good amount of discussion about what we would do over here uh, with the fire station, the whole police department, et cetera. And there was some talk about Transit Village. This is going back quite a while. And we were just very interested in preserving the historical asset of how that square works, you know, why, why, there, was, why there was a fire department and police station and uh, 
uh, why it was planned that way and, and possibly what could be done to uh, maintain that. So I'm very interested in working on behalf of the committee uh, and uh, working to preserve those assets and bring a, a different energy to the uh, committee. Well, thank you. Does thank anyone you. have any questions? Uh, that being said, I would like to make a motion that we appoint Mr. William Parrish, Jr. to the Historic Preservation Commission. I'd be pleased to second that motion. Please call the roll. Mr. Brantley? Yes. Mr. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for volunteering to help out. Uh, Ms. Leventhal, you have uh, two members uh, to be appointed to the Environmental Advisory Committee. Uh, yes, Mayor. There are two vacancies on Environmental Advisory, and there are members from um, Transportation Advisory that are interested uh, in serving, and uh, it, we are f f um, the liaison to Environmental Advisory. Um, <laughs> and have spoken with the chairperson, uh, Bob McCoy, who um, welcomes having uh, these folks join and have an emphasis on, uh, among other things, uh, non-vehicle, trans non-car transportation. So um, both uh, Richard Wenner and Jonathan Poor would bring uh, energy and expertise to the Environmental Advisory Committee. I'd like to ask that uh, we do make this appointment tonight. So you're moving uh, Rich Winner and Jonathan Poor. Is there a second? Yes. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Congratulations to Rich and Jonathan. Yes. <laughs> Okay, that concludes our board and committee appointments for this evening. Uh, we're going to go into public comment. Does anyone want to speak to the Township Committee other than uh, Woodland Road? Well, we had a feeling most of you were here for Woodland Road. Okay. Anyone want to speak to the Township Committee? Not Woodland Road. Not yet. Okay. Okay, so we will now move into um, our ordinances on final passage. There will be another public comment period later in case anyone wants to speak on that, but we will move into our um, final passages on ordinances. And uh, Ms. Fritzen, we have one here. Yes, Mayor, item number seven, ordinance number 2712-13. On final is an ordinance to amend chapter 257 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood entitled Vehicles and Traffic regarding Woodland Road. This ordinance will revise time limit parking on Woodland Road in Maplewood Village. Okay, uh, this ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. Now I'll ask, is there anyone here who would like to speak on this ordinance which would change the parking on Woodland Road? We have to go through this process because it's an ordinance and there has to be an official public hearing and you introduce it, and then you bring it up for final. Um, I suspect that, as I communicated with some of you, that we will either amend this tonight or table this tonight for consideration uh, at the March meeting because there's some people who could not be here tonight. But we certainly, because it was advertised, have to have the hearing for tonight, and some of you are here. So if there's anyone who would like to speak to us, we just ask that you come up here, give us your name and address, speak uh, as close as you can into the microphone so that we can hear you. So whoever's first. Good evening. Um, my name is Linda Crowshar. We live at 42 Woodland Road where we have lived for 32 years. And I'm here this evening to raise a provision in the proposed ordinance that we find to be most troubling and that is the proposal to uh, make available to the merchants permit parking on Woodland Road. That we believe is going to cause bumper to bumper parking up and down Woodland Road on a regular everyday, all day basis. Please uh, appreciate that even with the current time limit rules that we have now in place, 
uh, we have congestion parking very frequently on Woodland Road, particularly if uh, there is a, uh, a performance at the Bergdorf Center or a lot of activity uh, in the village. It is congestion parking. Uh, they're jammed one next to the other in front of my home and homes all up and down Woodland Road. The issue, the real problem from our perspective is the safety question that this raises. It is utterly treacherous attempting to pull out of our driveway in those conditions. We have a very narrow driveway and I can tell you that if there are SUVs on either side, when we pull out, we're basically pulling out blindly. You inch out little by little and you just hope that no one's barreling down Woodland Road uh, and something happening before they see you. <coughs> so dealing with those conditions as we do now on a frequent basis, uh, to impose this on us on an all day, every day basis seems quite inappropriate. We have the highest regard for the merchants in the village and all of the contributions they make to the, the fabric of our lives. However, uh, to essentially make Woodland Road a parking lot to deal with the problem of parking is just not seeming to be the right solution. And also uh, to have others having a privilege and access to our street that we as the residents, the taxpayers, don't have ourselves, we feel is quite unfair. If I park in front of my house for three hours and one minute, uh, I get a ticket. So we request and ask of you to please uh, reconsider and uh, eliminate this provision from the proposed ordinance for the sake of this, my family's safety, my neighbor's safety, and also the safety of the many pedestrians, commuter pedestrians, school children who are up and down our street uh, regularly, all day, every day, and ask that um, you kindly uh, consider this request. It's of utmost importance to us. May I ask just, just a very quick question, if I might. How close are you to the corner of, um, of Durand? First house. Oh, first house. Okay. Thank you. I have two questions. Um, are you troubled by changing the time from three hours to four hours? It's not our preference, but for the good of the community, I think, from my family's perspective, we can live with that. And if we were to change the merchant parking to also um, give resident parking permits, would that change your opinion of allowing merchant parking there? Uh, no, it wouldn't, because what we're really concerned with is bumper-to-bumper -bumper jammed in parking that causes the safety issues and that would just exacerbate it in my view. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the Township Committee? John Crowshaw, 42 Woodland Road. My claim to fame is that I am married to Linda Crowshaw. <laughs> and I would just like to add uh, another element to uh, Linda's analysis, which I felt was excellent, and that is that if there is quite a bit of activity on our street on an ongoing basis where there are workmen or craftspeople coming to work on homes for a variety of home improvement projects, so if this street were to become, as my wife put it, a virtual parking lot, then it would create problems for parking for delivery vehicles, for craftspeople who are coming to work on homes. Uh, I just want to reiterate what my wife said about the safety factor, because um, in addition to what she said, we have people with very young children on the street they go in and out of their houses, their driveways, very frequently. And as my wife can attest, and I'm sure my neighbors can attest, pulling out when there are cars, and by the way, 
frequently we find that when there's a very busy uh, event in the town, such as a very popular movie or something at the Bergdorf Center, some of the cars cheat their way a little bit and they're actually in the driveway. So it makes pulling out of, in our case, a fairly narrow driveway even more difficult and even more dangerous. What I might also add is that because of the street's proximity to the main drag in town, uh, for better or worse, there are a number of young people. Sometimes they're kind of drag racing a little bit or they're driving their vehicles very quickly. So once again, anything that would cause blockage of visibility on that street could put us at the risk of some of those cars that come barreling up and down the road, particularly on a weekend night or even late on a, on a weekday night. So I think from the point of view of our shared concern over safety, but there's also what you might call a lifestyle issue. Um, and part of that lifestyle is in addition to the delivery trucks and in addition to the uh, vehicles from people who are craftspeople, all of us have people who visit us, friends, neighbors, uh, people from out of town. Where are they going to park their vehicles when they come to visit us? Part of the joy of living in Maplewood is opening up your home to visitors. And if our visitors are una unable to find parking places because there's a jam up from the merchants or from others parking on our street, that's a pretty serious lifestyle issue. Uh, we pay, what I would guess, uh, among the highest property taxes in the town of Maplewood. And uh, while I don't feel that we're due any special privileges as a result, I do feel that we, our lifestyle considerations, such as that which I've mentioned and that my wife has mentioned, and that I'm sure my neighbors will mention, should be respectfully taken into consideration. Lastly, I just want to thank the members of the Township Committee for placing the comment period fairly high up in the agenda so that we have the opportunity to voice our concerns at an early time. Thank you Thank again. You. Is there anyone else who would like to address the Township Committee on this particular ordinance? Hi, uh, my, my name is Andrew Zeitlin. Uh, good evening. Uh, I uh, just uh, moved into town actually about um, three months ago, although I am a graduate of Columbia High School from class of 79. Um, and my mom still lives in town, 60-year resident, um, and um, is a very proud Maplewoodian. Um, I, I live at 3 Woodland, which is on the corner of Jefferson and Woodland. Um, and I, I do have uh, several issues with this uh, ordinance, and I'd just like to uh, perhaps uh, ask a few questions or uh, uh, just voice concerns about um, how this has been thought through. Um, firstly, what is considered to be a merchant of uh, Maplewood, how many permits would be issued to each merchant? Um, does that include um, any business owners on Valley Road? Um, uh, how many permits in, in total would be issued? Um, has there been a consideration of the number of spots there are actually relative to the number of merchants and the number of permits that would be issued? And, and then generally, um, is, is there uh, a, an overall master plan for parking for the village, um, longer range planning for what might uh, be increased traffic in, in Maplewood Village? Um, I've grown up in this town. I know the village very, very well. Um, it has changed um, somewhat over the years uh, to include more traffic, I think. Um, and, um, you know, I am concerned that this ordinance will have a negative impact on the neighborhood. Um, I think it's also worthwhile noting that Woodland Road is one of the prettier roads in, in, in the town. Um, it is uh, potentially of historic value and perhaps our historic committee should take a look at what this would have as, a, as a, an impact on, uh, on the township and, and on the, uh, uh, the general state of the village. So I thank you for your time. Um, I look forward to uh, hearing your comments on this. Um, and uh, participating more in, in, uh, in, in, in my new town or my old new town. Thanks a lot. Let me just answer a couple of questions. Um, the, the merchant parking program is only for the merchants in Maplewood Village. Um, the 
the way it works is that uh, it could be a single employee. It could be the uh, Kings, for example, has merchant parking. I think they have about 20 spots or 20 permits. And there, there would not be any parking assigned to Woodland. It would just be an open first come first serve for merchant parking. So it's not like uh, you know these 10 merchants park on Woodland. There's there's merchant parking on Duran. There's merchant parking on a couple of a number of other streets. There's merchant parking in the Bergdorf lot, and it's whoever's there first gets to park there. So that would be one answer. Um, yes, there is a plan. We did a uh, parking study that was done in June of last year, and they do recommend um, the uh, changes to Woodland. They actually recommend converting the 32 three-hour stall, which is, on, which is now on the three hours on the east side, which is the Maplewood Avenue side. Uh, they, can, they recommend uh, making that four hours. And then there's 26 permit parking, commuter parking permits on the other side down where you live, which you can park there for, as a commuter from, nine, from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. They recommend changing that to four hours, but we did not do that because we need commuter parking down there. So in your end of, of Woodland, you can park on both sides. But once you get past Beach, you can only park on the, on the east side, which is the Maplewood Avenue side. So there was a plan, and it's part of, of increasing parking in general, increasing. The village has changed somewhat the, the kinds of stores that we have or not. A lot of them are restaurants now, and we're also looking for multiple stops. So it's the, the running in and out doesn't work anymore. So you need a couple hours to go eat, maybe go eat and do something else. So that's why some of these changes have been recommended. Uh, um, just, just one. So the the 24 hour period is, is the major question. So yeah, what, there's no 24 is, hour period. So, so the permit is only for a maximum of four hours. No, the permit would be beyond the four hours. To, for for merchants. So for, if you had a merchant sticker, you'd be able to park there for five hours or six hours or seven. Oh, okay. Hours. So that's the time period that I'm. Yeah. That's the, that's the period I'm referring to. And the the way it was written, it wasn't clear, um, and and perhaps that that's where there should be some focus on amending the amendment uh, the, the the ordinances as to what is the time period allowed. Because the way it's written, it seems to me that it it seems to suggest 24 hour or unlimited parking um, as a merchant with, with this permit. And um, so... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, the language does say, except merchants displaying parking permits may park without the aforementioned limitations. Yeah, I guess you could interpret that as it sounds like they could park any time. Yeah, so... Um, that's, yeah, well, but that's, overall, that's I mean... That's not the intent. You know, okay. the reality no, I, is... The, yeah, yeah. Not, not to the intent, more to the language and, and the ultimate um, implementation that's of it. That's a fair point, yeah. yeah. But right now, someone could park there after 7 o'clock and not leave until 1.59 in the morning. Okay, so 2 o'clock is... 2 o'clock, everybody has to get there. Wide. Yeah. Um, so, so perhaps, you know, there would be the consideration of limiting it because, I mean, how many merchants really are going to be parking until 2 o'clock in the morning? Not um, many. Do, and you, do, do you really need the spots? And right. so, you know, you right. know, my concern, and I think some of the, the residents in the area's concern is, is that having a car park out in front of your house late at night with a permit where you can, you're, you yourself cannot park there it is, is a little odd. And, and quite frankly, in this day and age, I don't like having cars parked in front of my house at night, period. Um, but I understand that I live you know, near the village, so um, I'm, I'm willing to concede something there. But um, I think that's, that's a major concern. Okay. So, All right. Um, if, if upon uh, you know, the, the final drafting of it, if we could have a little bit more specificity on what the limitations are, that would be great. Okay. Hey, thank thank you. you. Anyone else want to address the township committee? <clears throat> Hi, I'm Ray Painter, 31 Woodland Road, in the first block off Duran. And um, so, yeah, one of the reasons um, many of us live there is the close proximity to town, um, obviously. And those parking spaces being close to town, it's in addition to the other arguments that that people have mentioned here, um, it seems like um, those parking spots are prime places for to get used frequently, not have somebody come and park there and sit there all day. It's a, it's a better economic use of the, of the location 
to be able to have the turnover for people to be able to come for a short period of time and then you know go into town and then the next person comes it's sort of like if you have a big uh, if if you're at a mall and you have a huge parking area you wouldn't designate the ones close to the mall as employee parking you know you do the ones further away so i mean i think that it, it's very close to town um it doesn't really make the most sense to have people come and park there all day it seems like someplace further away would be would make more sense okay Thank you. Could, yeah. could I just could I just ask the gentleman? Yeah, so sure. so if if this ordinance were being introduced without the provision about merchant parking, if the only conversation we were right. having was four hour parking or instead of three hour parking, right? Would you be here objecting? No, I don't think so. I, I mean, it is three hour parking now, right? Yes, so if we were to change, change it, it from three to four hour, I don't I don't think is a big difference. It's still you know the the idea of having the having the turnover. And there, when and there for when there is a big event that, or a lot of people need to come, that they can, you know, it does fill up. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Anyone else? Yep. Hi, I'm Paul Kwong. I live over on 35 Woodland Road. Um, do you guys know what the the hour of parking right now on Duran Road is, up the hill? Um. We'd have to look it up. There's, uh, I don't believe, there's, there's, uh, I think there's permit parking until you get to the brook, okay. where the bridge is, and then right. there's no parking after that, or it's, it's time limited parking. Okay. Uh, when we talk about commuter parking, what that means is between 6 and 9 a.m., yeah. you can only park there if you have a commuter parking permit. Right. So after 9 a.m., anyone can park there. Right. So, but generally what happens is commuters park there and no one can park there. So I, I believe up Duran to the bridge, the, the, the brook there is uh, a, a commuter permit and then I'm not positive after that. Yeah, I, I guess I'm just wondering because some questions are stirring in my mind because I know a lot of people park up the hill and they go out there like, you know, they'll park from, if it's four hours, so they'll park from noon and then go back out there, look at it, and maybe move it here and there just to say they moved it and then leave it the rest of the day. Because Duran up the hill is pretty much parking for a lot of the people who work on Maplewood Avenue, I believe. Just living there and watching people frequent it, I guess. My, ma uh, my main concern with the parking is that obviously it's going to be uh, going to be sort of like a parking lot. And I think it's going to be a visual impairment for drivers because you know as people park there's always gonna be room for little kids because there's lots of little kids on our block who can possibly just run out in between the cars out chasing a ball or whatever now currently you know people can, drivers can still see the kids running out of the driveway and the onto the walkway to the sidewalk if they had to because they're not visually impaired by all these cars so I contend that once all the cars are parked there it's just gonna be you, know, you can't see kids just popping out of nowhere so I mean, our block has a lot of kids going to Jefferson, a lot of kids going down to the junior high. So um, it's just going to be one more sort of visual hazard, I think. Just, uh, just, uh, just to um, say, it, uh, I'm not sure we made it as explicit. I just want to do that again. Between Beach and Durand on the west side, on yep. the Brook side, there'll be no parking. There's no parking now, and right. there will continue to be no parking. Right, on the west side. On the west side. Yeah, but, yeah. That, but on the east side. There's yeah, on the east side, there's right. parking now three, which would be changed to four. And if there was a merchant overlay, somebody would be able to park there beyond right. the four hours, yes. Right. Yeah, it's, but, but you, under, you guys understand what our yep. concern is. is everyone's yep. going to be there all day long. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else want to address the Township Committee on Woodland Road? Yes. My name is Elizabeth Demkin, and I live at 19 Woodland Road. Um, I live farther from the town part on, on Woodland, on the um, non-parking side of the road. And uh, I agree with what my neighbors have said. Um, I just also wanted to point out that Woodland is um, designated a, a bike-friendly um, street. And I have this vision of you know someone parking in front of the uh, Krauschauer's house and a delivery vehicle being on the other side of the street and some guy tearing up the street, street in his car and some guy coming up on his bike and you know who's going to lose 
and that's my concern that's one of my concerns in addition to what everybody else said is that you know if you're going to have it a bike friendly street you're not making it a bike friendly street thank, thank you. you anyone else want to address the township committee on woodland road okay um i received uh, and i think we all did receive some emails that there were people who were on vacation this week because of the school holiday and there was a request to hold this over until the march meeting um, and i would suggest that we table this uh, and um, have another hearing and uh, consider this on final on the uh, the fifth of march and then at that time we can consider any amendments that we might want to might want to make to it uh, at that time. You think it's appropriate to discuss possible amendments now, or do you want to wait to have another hearing? I think we should wait to have another hearing to get the full um, input from people. Because even if we do some amendments now, some people on the fifth may come and have some other things that may cause us to think again about it. Yeah, yeah. I suppose that's true. Yeah. And, and I also so think that two steps. Um, <laughs> we haven't heard. I mean, maybe somebody on Woodland likes the idea, so we might want to, you know, just leave it open. I doubt it. I but, don't know uh, who that person well, is. Just yeah. leave it open. <laughs> So, so did you want to say something? Yes. We have to republish it as it is. Yes. And if you amend it, we have to republish it. Right. I'm just thinking practically if it makes sense to, um, to vote on it and then put it on as a discussion item. Vote on it. No, vote, on the vote on the ordinance that's up now and then well, if it, if it fails, I'm just, I'm just thinking about. In other words, it seems like a waste. It, it's it's a waste of money to, uh, to to republish it if you're going to amend it. Well, you know, I I understand that, but there's also there are also stakeholders that propose this, and that was the Village Alliance, and they have not they're not here and they haven't spoken, okay. and I think that um, I think it's best if we take no action and some action because then we get you know we. I think the Village Alliance needs to know of some of these concerns, and they may come and make a cogent argument for it. Okay. But let's, let's leave that All right. so opportunity gonna... there. Could we avoid republishing um, before the next meeting by putting it on as uh, for public, people could come at public comment? No, it has to be a no, hearing. I mean, there, you advertise you to, that you're you voting have, on the phone. You have three choices. You can pass it, you can <coughs> defeat it, you can table it right. to the next meeting, in which case I have to, I have to, uh, I, we have to republish it for the next meeting in its present form, and that's my only. It's right. just a question. But I, I think, based on the comments, it isn't going to pass and shouldn't pass. Right. Um, but I think we should give at least the proponents an opportunity if they wanted to come and make okay. uh, some alternative or some <laughs> suggestion. I'll change the dates. Get it to Mrs. Fritz. Change the dates. Uh, I mean, we have to take some kind of we have formal to take, action. Yes. So what's the, what's the appropriate? We need a motion to table it until the third and re-advertise. So moved. No. We Sorry. Should, we should explain what, what we're yeah, doing. Well, basically, what we're doing is we are moving the, the discussion and the uh, decision to March 5th uh, based on the request of some residents that, or some people on the block that folks could not be here. Um, there are, as I said, this was a proposal that was put forth by the Maplewood Village Alliance. We have to let them know that there is opposition to that, to this, and see if they want to come and participate in this or not. So um, I think at best we will have some decision on the 5th as whether to pass it, what Mr. Desiderio said, pass it, to reject it, or to amend it. Right, and all the comments obviously from tonight are a matter of record right all the and people who yeah you yeah. don't have to come again because we yeah, have yeah. your record all your comments will be in the minutes you are entitled to come again but all your comments will be written in the minutes your name your address will be identified and the substance of your comments will be in the minutes so we'll have them for the next meeting right. and uh, anyone else who speaks at the next meeting will all go into our factor of decision making right so tonight tonight is not discarded <laughs> you don't have to come again and say the same thing all over again so you, you so certainly, certainly can if you want to though so <laughs> I, 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 I'd let's, be happy make, let's get a motion to table moved. it and uh till march 5th and and continue the public hearing I'm, so i move moved. that we table this uh ordinance to the meeting of march 
fifth. Um, is it the fifth? Yeah. Yes. yeah. March fifth of uh, two thousand thirteen. Is there a second? Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Branley. Yes. Mr. Larrier. Yes. Mr. Leventhal. Yes. Mr. Ryan. Yes, but I would be happy to vote it down too. Mayor DeLuca. Yes. Okay, so it's moved to March 5th, and there'll be a notice uh, um, uh, that will be a public hearing again and uh, consideration on final passage. Okay, we have another ordinance on final passage. Mayor, uh, number eight, ordinance on final passage. Ordinance for the dissolution of Transportation Advisory Committee. This ordinance will dissolve the Transportation Advisory Committee as a standing committee within the Township of Maplewood. <laughs> <laughs> should, should I just ignore and just, just go? <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Leventhal, would you read the, uh, <laughs> the statement? I would like to read the statements. <laughs> Uh, the, this ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board at the municipal building, and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. Is there anyone who wants to speak on this ordinance which uh, dissolves the Transportation Advisory Committee? Even though the pretzel, I think. Seeing no one will close the hearing, we get a motion. Mr. Brownlee. Yes, uh, I move this ordinance to be adopted as a whole, and the clerk be directed to publish the same as a past ordinance in the Maplewood South Orange News Record according to law. Second. Please call any discussion. Ms. Leventhal. Yes, I would once again like to thank the Transportation Advisory Committee for, for their work. I had mentioned previously on the Jitney, on commuter parking improvements, bike racks, pedestrian and road safety, and thank them for their interest in uh, some of the uh, membership uh, being appointed to the uh, Environmental Advisory Committee. Uh, anything else? Please call the roll. Mr. Branley? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Thank you very much. We have another ordinance on final. Yes. Uh, item 9, Mayor Ordinance 2714-13. It's an ordinance to amend Chapter 257 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood entitled Vehicles and Traffic. This ordinance will designate certain spaces near Springfield Avenue for non-exclusive merchant permit parking. This ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. Is there anyone who would like to speak on this ordinance? Seeing no one, will close the public hearing. Mr. Brownlee, can we get a motion? Indeed. Uh, I move this ordinance be adopted as a whole, and the Kirk clerk be directed to publish the same <laughs> As a past ordinance, the Maplewood South Orange News Record according to law. Second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Larrier? Yes. Ms. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Okay, we have a couple ordinances on introduction. Item 10, ordinance number 2715-13. <coughs> it's an ordinance permitting the employment of off-duty police officers within the township of Maplewood. This ordinance will Brown? permit the employment of off-duty Maplewood police officers by certain contractors, utility companies, and others. Mr. Brownlee, can we get a motion? Yes, I move the passage of this ordinance on its first reading. It's publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record and a hearing to be held on March 5th, 2013. Second. Any discussion? It's going to be one of those nights when Mr. Brownlee moves right. all the ordinances I'm again. on a roll. And um, somebody Larry now. is so busy. <laughs> uh, please call the roll. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Leventhal? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. And we have our final ordinance on introduction. Item 11, ordinance number 2716-13 is an ordinance to reaffirm the appropriate authority for the Maplewood Police Department. This ordinance will reaffirm that the Maplewood Township Business Administrator is designated as the appropriate authority for the Maplewood Police Department. Mr. Brownlee? I thought you had to ask yes, something. Anybody want to speak on this? Or? No. All right. I move the passage of this ordinance on its first reading. It's publication according to law on the Maplewood South Orange News Record and a hearing to be held on March 5th, 2013. Second. 
Thanks. Any discussion? Question? Yes. Why? Why what? Why are we doing this? Because the chief, the police chief, has actually asked for a reaffirmance of the uh, of the appropriate authority, and then uh, we want to, in compliance with the statute, uh, direct that certain rules and regulations adopted by the appropriate authority uh, for the for uh, for control of the police department. Okay, so it's. Joe's always, uh, Mr. Manning's always well, been not in appropriate always. things. It has not always been, but it, but it has, it been, has in been in recent In recent years, at one time, I believe it was the police director. Right. Okay. But in recent years, and this is just an affirmation, and I'm not sure that we ever did it formally by ordinance. Oh, so okay. this will Fine. just have it as of record. Thank you. Thanks for clarifying. No problem. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Please call the roll. Mr. Branley? Yes. Blarier? Yes. Mr. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Okay. We have a resolution. Item number 12. Yes, Mayor, it's a resolution establishing the 2013 sewer rate. Mr. Ryan. Um, Mr. Chair, I move for the adoption of this resolution. Second. If I could just. Um, and Mr. Ryan, could you describe it? Sure. Um, the Township's Finance Committee met and discussed um, the situation uh, surrounding the Township's legal bills uh, in connection with a, uh, uh, a hazardous waste lawsuit. Uh, having to do with the Passaic River. Um, this has uh, been in the papers. Um, the sewer authority that the township is a member of, the joint meeting of Essex and Union County, is being sued uh, as part of this, and the township of Maplewood, along with a whole lot of other municipalities, are being sued as part of it. Um, township's incurring some uh, legal fees uh, associated with this suit, and the joint meeting is incurring legal fees, and is charging us for our share of it uh, as well. Um, Council has been making some progress on uh, trying to uh, make this go away, so we're sort of hoping that this will be the last time we do this, but we have a substantial uh, unexpected legal bill uh, this year, and so uh, in order to cover it, we are uh, passing this resolution, we're trying to pass this resolution this evening to have a one-time increase in the joint meeting fee, um, in the joint meeting uh, sewer use charge, uh, in the amount of $18 per dwelling unit to cover the legal expenses both that the townships incurred and that the joint meetings incurred and is billing us for. So the Finance Committee discussed this, uh, agreed unanimously, brought the recommendation back to the Township Committee, and here we are. Any discussion? Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Please call the roll. Brantley? Yes. Mr. Larrier? <coughs> Yes. Mr. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Okay, we have three discussion items. We're going to move item number three up to the top. This is the 2013 budget discussion, uh, capital and revenue. Um, and uh, what I'd like to do is to uh, read a statement first of um, uh, a decision that we will be entertaining this evening and this has to do with the women's club and uh, uh, it will you'll when I read it you'll you'll be uh, aware of what we're talking about and um, other I'll ask other members of the township committee if they'd like to make any comments um, so here we go we were saddened last month when we heard that Tom Kearns was no longer going to purchase the women's club. Tom and the women had worked hard in crafting an agreement that we thought was positive for Maplewood Village and the entire community. At the Township Committee's February 5th meeting, we asked ourselves if we should buy the property for public use. We agreed to explore a purchase, and I am happy to announce that we've reached a deal with the women's club to purchase the property for $1 million. Paramount in the decision was our strong interest in maintaining the viability of Maplewood Village as a premier shopping area. The Women's, Club, the Women's Club's property will give us the ability to dramatically increase village parking to service the community's needs. By doing nothing on the site, we would add nearly 60 parking spaces. This is just taking the site as is, just leaving the building up and doing nothing. We would add nearly 60 parking spaces about equal to the number of spots along the entire length of Maplewood Avenue or the spots in Rickleton parking lot. Different configurations increase the amount of parking that could be available in the future. 
We also are aware of the building's importance in this community. Who has not been to a function in the women's club? Sadly, time has not been a friend to the building. Our intention is to evaluate what it would take to keep the building standing. We will explore a partnership with nonprofit groups and the private sector to see what is, what is possible. We understand the value of that building and will be guided by its history as we move forward. We are buying the property for half its listing price. At least anyone think that it was our negotiating skills, let me assure you it was not. The reason why we were able to reach this deal is due to the dedication and commitment to Maplewood by members of the Women's Club. They could have made more on the sale to a developer, but instead want to work with the township to create a community benefit. Acquiring this property is a game changer for Maplewood Village. We thank the members of the Women's Club for their decision to sell the property to the township. Tonight we will be discussing the capital budget and if we have the votes here, that we will insert a line in the capital budget for the purchase of the Women's Club. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to say anything? I think that um, when I thought about, when, when we first began discussing this opportunity uh, and the possibility of doing something like this, uh, I, I thought it was a... Uh, just an outstanding opportunity for us. Uh, for as long as I can remember, the Women's Club uh, building has been a sort of a, a, a cornerstone of the village. It's a pretty building right at the entrance into the village. It's, a, it's an important part of the, the sort of the, uh, the cultural life of the town. Uh, and, I, and as the building was uh, initially on sale, I remember thinking how sad it would be if the building had to go. I was very pleased that there was a buyer who was interesting in rehabilitating the building and keeping it. Uh, and when that deal fell through, um, I was very pleased that we'd have an opportunity to try and do something like that as well. I think this is a, a unique, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for us. Uh, I think your, your uh, choice of words, game change, is, uh, is really uh, is quite apt. Um, we can, uh, in one stroke, uh, address some of the parking congestion in the village, um, open ourselves up to other opportunities with that parking lot and other parking lots, um, have an opportunity to explore options with uh, uh, third parties, with nonprofits to manage that building for us. Um, it's an opportunity that won't come by again, and it is uh, hard to imagine being able to take advantage of all those opportunities for such a relatively low price. Um, I, 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 I'm very enthusiastic about this idea. Uh, I support it completely. You know, it means, honestly, that the thing that we've been doing for the last several years of uh, attempting to have a capital budget that's smaller than the amount of debt we, were that, that, that we, we keep trying to shrink the amount of money that we're borrowing every year, and we've been doing that very successfully, uh, Taking this action would force us to make an exception to that practice, and uh, you know, to make an exception for a one-time opportunity like this seems to me to be the right thing to do. And so uh, I'm I'm okay with recognizing that that's what this decision means and supporting it. Yes, Ms. Larry. Uh, being what Mr. Ryan said, um, I initially did have my concern of just about just that thing, about just taking on the, the loan, taking on the debt. Um, however, and I'm thinking that if I have that issue that there are others who are watching who will also have that issue. Um, and I would like to point out, as was pointed out to me, that the parking in that area is crucial. Um, any development that we do with um, the post office, will require extra parking and we will have to pay for it either now or later. Um, so I agree that this is absolutely a, a good choice and um, hope that it goes through exactly the way we hope. Anyone else? Leventhal? Yeah, and, and I agree with what has been said. But to me, in summary, we're able through this purchase to in, 
enhance the village, especially as we move forward with redevelopment within the village itself. Bradley, would you like to say anything? Yes, just, just you know, in considering whether or not to support this, um, it's it's an interesting um, juxtaposition uh, in terms of the time. You know, a fortuitous coming together of of multiple things. Um, the fact that interest rates are as low as they are at this time, the fact that we're able to get such a low price for this as well because of the willingness of the Women's Club to work with us, and the fact that we have a need that needs to be addressed. Having those three things come together um, it, you know, presents us with a very unique opportunity and uh, I think one that we would be remiss to look askance at. So I'm willing to support this. Thank you. Um, let, us, uh, let us do two things while we're talking about this. Um, we'll get a motion to instruct the administrator and the CFO to include the purchase price in the capital budget and also to instruct the, uh, our attorney to move forward in um, securing the contract. Mr. Chair, and I, I yes, I uh, I will move um, I will move that resolution. Chair, sir, any discussion? Please call the roll. Brownlee. Yes. Mrs. Larrier. Yes. Mrs. Leventhal. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Mayor DeLuca. Yes. And again, thank you to the Women's Club for. Uh, for their working with the Township Committee to make this possible. Okay, now we're going to go to the uh, to more discussion of the capital budget. What, Mr. Manning, what would you like to do first? Do you want to talk about revenue or capital budget? Finish the capital budget? Yes, let's finish the capital budget. Okay. I, I, on, um, I think it was the 17th, I gave you a revised capital budget with recommendations. We'll receive copies. Yes. yes. That included $1,100,000 for uh, the purchase of the Women's Club, and I offset that. So we have the, uh, we have the 80 percent um, rule, which is or, or goal. Right. This year, that would just be we would not incur any more uh, debt than we are retiring this year. So right. rather than just 80 percent of it, we, we would go up the full amount for the one year. Because so let me this. just to, uh, again, oh, great. Um, as Mr. Ryan and Mr. Manning said, we have a policy of not incurring more than 80% of the debt that we're retiring. This year we're going to deviate from that policy We're going, because of the purchase of the Women's Club. We are not going to incur any more debt than 100% of what we were, are retiring, correct? That is correct. Okay. So that's actually better than I, than I feared it would be. That's good. Okay. So uh, we've received this uh, recommendation from Mr. Manning. Uh, I have a couple questions and some suggestions, and uh, I'll start, and then we can go down and see if anyone else has anything. Uh, I would like to, uh, the Dog Waste Pet Station, uh, it's a very small amount, $5,684. I think we should take that out of the Open Space Trust Fund and not take it out of here. <coughs> I, I think that there was a, uh, a good argument made to include the um, uh, poles on Springfield Avenue that will enable us to hang banners on Springfield Avenue. We have received information from the partnership that uh, two sets of these poles, uh, that would be four poles, two sets of these poles, which would allow two banners in different places, would cost um, somewhere in the vicinity of 28 thousand dollars I think we have to add some money on top of that maybe 10 percent but we also have uh, a twenty thousand uh, dollar amount that we've received from um, the uh, developer of Walgreens 1633 Springfield LLC uh, so that twenty thousand dollars could go to that so I would suggest we put thirty thousand in there for the poll offsetting it with $20,000 that we have for this uh, LLC contribution. Is that, hey, that was clear, Very right? clear and it okay. uh, sounded like good ideas. And then the other thing I would suggest is that we um, 
take out some money out of the municipal road and curb improvements and put it into the building improvements um, only because we are buying the women's club and it would be useful to have a little money there in case we needed to put some money in there right away to stabilize it uh, or make it useful in the year 2013. So maybe if we uh, uh, took out you know, 50,000 to 85,000 and made the, the building improvements a flat 200,000. That's right. probably what I would recommend. Take out 85,000 on the road. Because you said we have $400,000 already in the road program, right? Yes. So if we took out 85,000 or so, that would still leave 400 and something. That would give us 800,000 for the year. That would be uh, plenty to do what we need to do with the roads this year. Those would be my two suggestions. Those are three. Oh, three suggestions. So it goes up with your suggestions. It would raise it about eight thousand dollars. Four thousand something. Well, well we're taking I, out the I have to figure it all out. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to adjust. Yeah. Move it around so I'll that move. we still come out to the same bottom yes. line. But, okay. Yeah. That's that's my concern. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, Mr. Ryan? So, small matters. Remind me, please, where the diesel tank conversion is happening. Uh, that is, uh, our reliance on diesel fuel is escalating, so we are going to convert gasoline tanks at DPW, Thank some you. of them, Thank you. to diesel. Okay. And this uh, includes, so um, we're able to get a grant for the emergency generator for Town Hall, but we're not able to get a grant for an emergency generator for the library? Well, we, we are going to apply for grants for all of our emergency generators. So it's, possible, so it's possible that these numbers will change and that... No, they will not change. What may happen is we may be able to... Uh, I, I don't know. If we get the grants, we'll figure out how we can apply that to bringing our debt down. It may be that we'll put the money in for next year and pay off more debt. I'm, I'm not quite sure. But we won't know for a while. Sure. Okay. That's So fine. that's why we can't really count on it. And, and we're... Um, I saw that the, there, was a mm, there was a suggestion of... Under twenty-two thousand dollars or so in pool uh, repair work that we are uh, not recommending. Not recommending from this. You know, if the pool um, the pool fund can pay for it, they could pay for it. But we're not recommending adding it here. Not in, in this particular year. Right. Right. Just one thing I would like to suggest with the emergency generator, we have it listed here from Memorial Library. But in our planning and engineering meeting. The recommendation of Mr. Malvesi was to uh, get a portable generator. Yeah. We'll change the. So if you could change that, because what we can do is put connections at the different locations, Hilton Library, Bergdorf Center, and the main library building, so that we can pull a generator up there and plug it into their panel box. And he was suggesting that, particularly because the Memorial Library has a flooding issue. Yes. A potential flooding issue. It's below the floodplain. Any other comments or questions? Uh, typically what we do is because, just so uh, we remind ourselves, this is a fairly uh, expensive proposition to craft a bond ordinance. We have uh, our bond attorney does it. And it has to be published. And uh, so we want to make sure that we're comfortable uh, with this before we instruct our staff to go ahead and uh, do the bond ordinance. So we would need a motion to instruct uh, Mr. Manning and Mr. Fresalone to prepare a bond ordinance along the lines of what we uh, discussed this evening. Then you uh, understand everything. Yes. I would, I would um, make a motion to so instruct staff to move forward. So, uh, second. Any discussion? Let's call the roll. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mrs. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Okay, now Mr. Manning, Mr. Frizzalone, you've given us some information about our revenue. Yes. For 2013. Yes. And uh, it got a little better in four days. Maybe if we keep waiting, every four <laughs> days it'll get better. Miraculously. Not, no. Yeah, okay. No, we're at, the, we're at the maximum here? Okay. We are. Um, May I suggest we use the one that you sent out today? Yes, the the one with the... There's 219. 219 on the top. Yes. Yeah, the sheet. Okay. The upper right hand. Okay. Uh, yes. okay. Yes, I'll Labels have to get that one on my... Everyone got that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
uh, it, the the the, uh, the explanations may change a little bit because some of the numbers changed. But right. maybe you could explain uh, what changed here so that we're clear about it. Well, with with the um, increase in the store user store user fees. I was able sorry, to it's hard. I'm okay. sorry. With it's the hard increase in the sewer user fee that you just voted on this evening, that was not reflected in the miscellaneous revenue column. Okay. It is now reflected in the miscellaneous revenue column. In this. And in some this minor story. tweaking of some other revenues, bringing them up based mm -hmm. on you know what we received for last year. Um, Mr. Fresalone went over with a fine tooth comb and felt it was prudent, some additional tweaking, uh, nothing major. No. And just to remind us, we cannot anticipate more revenue than we received last year, correct? No. That is correct. Unless, unless well, a fee ordinance or something like we did with the... Right. Sorry, sorry. Because, because the sewer right. resolution was passed, right. we now can anticipate more, than more because we know what the sewer <coughs> ordinance right, is going to... Sewer uh, fee is going to be. Yes. So just uh, so that we... So everyone knows what we're talking about. The increase uh, to be raised by taxes, based on what you're proposing here, is an increase of eight hundred and five thousand dollars, which equates to slightly less than a, it's a two point nine nine percent increase. Okay. Now we have not had an opportunity to look at the, to do some final discussion on spending. We've just talked. We've had the hearings. Uh, we still have to do some final discussion on spending. And also, we have to go over some of these numbers to make sure we, are, we understand that you've done that, but we want to go through it again and make sure that we understand everything uh, when we do a final. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about what's proposed to us right now? Yes. Um, I know that it's difficult to do a number-to-number a, a -number comparison between 2012 and 2013 because of the tax reassessment. Um, are you now, are you, are you able to sort of um, reverse calculate the 2012 number um, and see, try and have a comparison as if the, the reassessment didn't happen? I mean, I understand that the amount to be raised by taxes is going up 3%. Uh, it would be nice to be able to, as we did the last time, break it down by um, uh, residential versus commercial and break it down by uh, what the what the change would would be if we hadn't had a revaluation, uh, a reassessment, I'm sorry. Um, I Because I, I think the last time we had a, a revaluation and we had this conversation, it was helpful to just have a little bit more granularity on these numbers to know how, you know, a resident is affected, how a business is affected, and to sort of reverse engineer um, a, an actual. We will do our best and reverse engineer the okay. the numbers. Ms. Leventhal. This is a question on the revenue. We have a um, spreadsheet from February 15th, and I know there's been adjustments to that. But in, in, t in striking a figure for a particular line for 2013, when we say that we cannot go over 2012, is that what we spent in 2012 or what we allocated in 2012? You mean in the revenue side? Uh, yes. I'm sorry. Is that what you mean? On revenue, yes. On revenue, we cannot anticipate any more than we collected. Not okay. Then I'm, uh, I think I've Go ahead. missed something okay. that takes us from there to, to the budget. Um, on uh, the February 15th printout, Which? I see, for example, commuter parking permits. Uh, where we're anticipating 247,000. Last what number you, oh, you, what I'm page? at. Um, what page? Yes, the page number is 93, midway down the page, commuter parking permits. Mm -hmm. um, but it says uh, that the actual for 2012 was 79, almost right. 80,000. Because that, you have to look down under the Jitney permits under the New Jersey Transit. Okay, they were incorporated into it. Right. Okay. All right. And is that similar to then on page 89, other programs, fees, and permits out of recreation? Yes. It's the same thing. Same Thank thing. You. Okay. Thanks very There's much. There's many instances it gets in that. collapsed. Yes. Mr. Mr. Ryan? Um, I, I didn't want to speak again. If, no, go ahead. You can speak. Um, just two, uh, two points. Just want to make clear, your recommendation 
staff's recommendation on on this uh, on non-governmental organizations is we um, give the Springfield Avenue Partnership what they asked for, give the Maplewood Village Alliance what they asked for, give um, the it's Community ECR. Coalition on Race what they asked for, and give uh, YouthNet uh, two thirds of what they asked for. Yes. Um, YouthNet was funded from two lines last year. They were funded from just a, a, a contribution from us, and they were also funded from um, municipal alliance. From the right. municipal alliance, right. are we suggesting that? We're, are we suggesting zero for the municipal alliance? No, or? no. Uh, the municipal alliance they go. I mean, if their programs fit in to the municipal alliance goals and objectives, then the municipal alliance can award, you know, a okay. grant. So um, I'm I'm suggesting that we you know, in anticipation of them becoming self-sufficient, which they said they were going to try to develop their model to do, to kind of give them an incentive, but without pulling the rug out completely. So both YouthNet and um, CCR are, are uh, shared enterprises or joint enterprises uh, with folks in South Orange. Do we know how your recommendations and, and your suggestions here uh, match up with our partners? I do not know that. Okay. I, I think, you know, we're not making a final decision on this. I, I think I'd like to know, I'd like to have that information, at, you know, before we make a, a final decision on it. Got it. But if I could ask the sort of the, now, now that I got the, the minutiae out of the way, if I could ask the meatier question here. Um, we, um, two years ago, we had a zero municipal tax increase, and because we had a zero increase, we were able to bank that 2%. Last year we had a 2% increase. This year if we uh, go ahead with the budget that you recommend, um, it's a 3% increase. We'd be using some of that banked uh, appropriation that we basically saved two years ago. So, Yes, but uh, it'd either be using the cap bank or using the exemptions or a combination right, or of the a combination. Okay. Okay. So, So here's my question. Just hypothetically speaking, let's say that the Township Committee were to say to you, uh, no, I'm sorry, we're that's unacceptable, 2% or nothing, um, find, uh, do what you have to do to get us down to 2%. What's the dollar amount for that, and what, does, what would that mean if we directed you to do that? Well, the 2%, take 2% of the 2012 amount to be raised by taxation, which I believe is 504,000. Oh. 504, right. Okay, yeah, you're right. Okay, 2%. Right. So it's about $340,000. Right. Wait, I'm hearing. Two so if we numbers. if we told you to get down to two percent, what we'd be telling you to do is to cut the budget by three hundred thousand, three hundred fifty thousand dollars by right. tax point. Correct. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. And suppose we said, okay, that, that's what we want you to do. Do that. I don't know how we would do it. Well, we would All have right. to do it. We'd have to find a way to do it. Right. It would be, you know, I anticipate dramatic ramifications, but you know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not directing you to do that. I'm. I'm just yeah, asking no, hypothetically if we, we were to decide. It. We. I think we need to understand if we, what it means if we discuss and decide to tell you to do that. The, you know, basically the only real, in terms of the operating budget, the only real. Um, you know, there's no real increase in operating other expenses. Hasn't been for. For this is I think the fourth year. Mm -hmm. In terms of the, it would have to be manpower, or it would have to be uh, cuts, Salaries. salary, and wages. Okay. Which would, you know, equate to services and things like that. But it's clear. Um, I don't know which one. Question on the revenue. Yes. Uh, you have not anticipated any uh, revenue from the pilot on Burnett Avenue? No. Okay. And if, in order to do that, what would we, if we wanted to anticipate some revenue, what would be the procedure? We'd have to get approval from the state? From the local finance board. That might be difficult because yeah. they're still constructing the building. Yes. We, we would not know exactly when and when it would Right. It, it, it only gets paid after, I think, I'm not sure if it's the CO or a certain occupancy fine, right. level. Right. So, okay. Well, other and the they, same and other that, municipalities. And that would only be for that portion. Correct. Mm -hmm. So it, it would, yeah. it, you know, if it was four, it's four hundred thousand dollars. So, so it's, it's like hundred thousand a quarter. Th thirty, three thousand dollars a month, yeah. right? Or thirty thousand a month? I don't know. You figure thirty thousand a month. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. You figure it out. Uh, and the same thing with <laughs> well, across the street. Thirty thousand a month. Well, is, it's four hundred thirty thousand a month is is the whole tax point. Yeah. 
Well, right. you were saying it was about four hundred thousand, yeah. right? So it's uh, it's a um, hundred thousand. That's for that's for two buildings. We we look at it at that as the you know tax court, the right. tax. So it's on. And the same thing for across the street. That just comes on and that just gets put on the valuation for taxes. That doesn't, we can't itemize that as a, okay. that's not a pilot, that's just a regular tax. Okay. But we, I, you know, we ought, to, we ought to look at the, we ought to look at the, the reality of just how much, <clears throat> excuse me, we ought to look at the reality of just how much surplus we're appropriating in this budget. Yeah, well, what, what, what is your thought? I mean, I, you've, you've put a lot of surplus, 90, what is it, 90? 90, 90, almost 96%. 96 percent. Yeah, you're leaving yourself with... Uh, 72, 70, 000. yeah. What do you feel about that? Scared. No, I, I, seriously, it's, it's, it it's, puts us in a vulnerable situation. We've not been that low ever. You know, eventually we're going we're to have to go out and borrow money, and that's going to affect our bonding rate. In other words, to, to pay our bills, we, the surplus right. is our we'll have to get fund that we brought. Participation notes and stuff. Excuse me? We'll have to, get, we'll have to Taxi, borrow money yes. until the money comes in, correct? Right. Well, we've been lucky with, with estimated tax bills. We, okay. we don't always have to do that. But my concern is when we go out to borrow money, the rate that we'll be borrowing. Oh, it will be higher because yeah. we don't have the reserves. Right. You know, it so, can affect know, our bond rating. Not, not, having, um, not anticipating that pilot in this year's budget and having that money arrive is in essence replenishing the surplus. So, yes. De yeah. facto. Uh, yeah. How much do we have left? Uh, 72. No, no. We, last year we had 152. So, right. yeah. yeah. Yes. Right. The, you know, the fact of the matter is <coughs> we knew, we had our eyes open in 2011 and 2000. 12, that we used one-shot revenues. We used a good portion of, of the sale across the street to, uh, to meet the budget there. We knew that was going to happen. But there were reasons to do that, and, and I think at this point we have to make sure that we're providing the services that people in this community want to receive. And uh, we're just out of those one-shot opportunities that we've had in the past. And still we're not in a terrible position. And still what? Still, we are not in a terrible position. Right. You know, we're not in double digits no, no, or, right. we're, or yes, somewhere. That so. is correct. Okay. We need to set up another meeting to talk about the total package now. We, we know what our revenue looks like. We know what our expenses look like. And now we have to mesh them together to make sure we're comfortable in uh, having you prepare the final budget for us to, get <coughs> and to there consider. And there were several dates. Uh, yeah, they don't seem to work, so we're going to have to figure out another right, I'll figure date. Something out. But it's going to take some time sitting. It's not going to work at a meeting like no. this because it's going to take some time to sit down and, and do some discussion. So I, I will uh, we'll work on those dates. I'll work on those days. We'll get something out tomorrow. Is there anything anybody else wants to say about this portion of where we are? Um, thanks for uh, a good, thorough analysis of these numbers, gentlemen. You're welcome. Helpful and appreciated. Thank you. Okay, we're back now to our next discussion item, which is the Maplewood Pool. Uh, the Pool Advisory Committee has recommended that we open uh, on Memorial Day weekend, and uh, we, they are recommending that if we do that, the cost would be about an additional cost of $58,000 and that they uh, would, chart, would increase the fee $30 per family to cover the cost for the expanded season. Can I get a yes. question about it? Yes. Is the proposal just weekends? Yes. 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 It is oh. uh, uh, weekends from Memorial Day uh, through June 15th, and then June 15th it would open every day. So it's three extra weekends. Yes. And it's thirty dollars. Yep. Wow. I don't have the breakdown yep. for you, but twenty thousand dollars in uh, salary. Wages. Salary. Uh, uh, that would be just uh, seasonal employees because there's a shorter time available to begin the opening procedures, so they have to put more people on to move that up. Staffing is twenty thousand dollars. 
supplies is like seven thousand dollars chemical cost ten thousand dollars trash collection a thousand so this is something that people had uh, requested we did a survey of pool uh, users and one of the recommendations was to open up earlier you know, I, have to, I have to tell you I, I like the idea an awful lot I'm just having a hard time wrapping my head around the size of that number well I also question is it the same $30 for every category yes okay across the board so if we take the uh, I'm gonna take a cat well the first category the fee is $365 um, with the early bird registration. So it's a good, it's a good figure, 365, because 30 is one twelfth of that or eight to nine percent. So does that? They were not mix? thinking that. They were just doing across the board. That's their recommendation. If we want to do something different, then we can do something different. Or the, if the we don't want to. Or if we don't want to. The, the, assum the assumption is, and then I'm, I'm kind of sharing uh, some of Mr. Ryan's uh, uh, sentiments, if you would. Um, the, the assumption is that the number of, is the assumption that the number of, of uh, purchasers uh, stays the same or is slightly higher, slightly lower? It's assuming the same numbers. Yeah, not just by the weekend package. This would be charged to everybody. Right, but I'm saying in terms of the total number of uh, passes sold, uh, the, the number expectation yep. is it's the, the same number of people. The expectation is that this is not going to dissuade anyone from joining. Right. Mm -hmm that this will meet or exceed the membership uh, of last year. I haven't had a chance to, to uh, do, the, do the division uh, because I guess I, I hear the numbers for those three weekends and, and I try to reconcile that with, and I haven't had a chance to do that yet, not criticizing the numbers one way or the other, with what that would if, if you assume that same rate of burn you know does that does that did the numbers add up you know what i'm saying i mean well, three weekends cost uh basically saying ten bucks sixty thousand ten dollars a week yeah extrapolate that out for the rest of for the summer every day and all the days so does that mean a, does that mean a week costs 35 dollars no well, no because there if this two is days, uh, if two days cost 10 why doesn't seven days cost 35. I'm, I'm, sort of, I'm sort of doing similar math. Uh, I'm not saying that exact example, but I'm, I'm trying to make an apples to apples. You know, the, the burn rate. Is there? Is there? Are there any uh, economies of scale that that? Oh, but if you leave it open for seven days, it's the, the rate per day is yeah, a little yeah. less, and so because you have startup costs because it's the weekend, you know, only and you know that that makes a difference in the in the burn rate in a sense. Can, can uh, I can I ask a sort of a related question mm -hmm. about this, Mayor? So. When do we have to decide about this? They need a decision right away because they start <coughs> in March collecting the fee. Right. They have to get out notice that the early bird is available and they're going to start collecting. And I think the resolution tonight, this resolution has it on? Uh, I can check it. No. No, it does not? Okay. Well, re oh, the resolution the for the full fee for has all the $30? The before it I don't think should it, reflect. It sh the most yeah but it shouldn't reflect this thirty dollars all right well then yeah you know there's the they uh he calculates this is uh, uh keith nudson did this and this was discussed with the pool advisory committee mm -hmm. uh last week the uh membership there's 2043 memberships that includes all the different categories so that's how they got to the thirty dollars Did he say and, and on your um, your sheet um, for the membership, yeah, we have. Uh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. One second. Uh, membership categories for the early bird registration. Couples category is 365. Is that what you have? All right. So then it it does not reflect the additional thirty dollars. Right. right. It does not. And it, it should does not. not. So that's right. good. It should not. Okay. Right. So you do have. Oh well, it's going to be the fourth. You meet on. The fourth, the fifth, fifth, March fifth, the fifth, and they want to start to sell ten days thereafter. Right. Well, we could do this as a pilot for one year, and then yeah. it can be done by a resolution. Right, because if it isn't successful and it becomes too expensive, then they should, then they won't be able to really. Or if, repeat if it. people object to it, well, I mean, right. I guess what I'm 
what I'm um, finding a little um, quisitive is uh, what's the issue? Yeah. Well, okay, so here, here's, here's the issue, right? You're talking about uh, a one-time increase of 30 bucks to, to make it available for three weekends. Right. And, you know, we already had people complaining how expensive the pool was, etc. Suppose somebody says, well, why should I have to pay $30 more? I'm not going to use it those weekends anyway. I'm out. And then we find that out. How fast? Do we find it Well, fast? they don't sign. They, don't, they walk with their feet. So well, no, they, no. So, no. But then, then the point is that, you know, you have a certain expectation of a revenue stream. You change, you know, we changed the rates last year mm -hmm. in a big bump. Right. And we're going to change the mm -hmm. rates again in a big bump the next year. Are but we going to have more people walk than benefit that we get? And will we find out too late to do anything about it? Well, even if we do, I mean, it, that's always a possibility that somebody could walk. There's, yeah. there's all kinds of reasons why people could people their individual jobs could change yeah, yeah, sure no the, no but, you know, but the the shore the shore comes back the shore does a big promotion and people well, feel well all right so so to, let me what? let me say this i mean uh, you honestly with, think 30 dollars to have 10 more days at the pool is going to drive people away but it was six more and days six. Well, you got six you got days. seven Two, seven. Three weekends, right? Memorial Day. Memorial Day is a three-day right. weekend. Okay, yeah, all right, seven days. And then you have uh, two other two. weekends, right? Right, four and three is seven, right. right. Yeah, seven. All right, so that's six or seven. Is, is it, is it, um, did, did, was it, uh, was any consideration given to the idea of a, you know, a separate fee for just those early opening weekends? Then you'd have to charge a significant amount. I mean, then how would you know? Suppose you got 100 people, 100 memberships, and they'd have to cover, I mean, essentially you have to, you have to expect everybody there. Now, if they find that the, the numbers don't warrant it, then you, you can send staff home and not incur those expenses. But I think you have to warrant, you have to, I think you have to anticipate uh, a full participation for those days. Right, mathematically. Yeah. I mean, the reality is that it is getting warmer earlier. And we have had May days when it's been very hot. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to do the math on the downside, right? I mean, suppose we do this and we get a substantial drop off in memberships because people are, you know, enough's enough. I'm not spending 30 more bucks for seven more days. Well, we might. And we might get people who decide, well, it's a good idea because now I'm getting a full summer and I'm yeah, not going down to shore. Yeah. Then. What's the downside to doing it next year instead? With what? I didn't hear what you said. Doing it next year instead of this year. I'm, I'm concerned about the, the big bump that we just hit them with last right. year myself. Right. But we're not charging them for the same. We're charging them for some additional service. You're getting right. Right? So this is not, we weren't coming back. In fact, we're, we're writing off some costs because we don't want to increase the fee. We're not taking normally the transfers from the pool budget into the general budget. I, I, do, I do have one question. and I. Again, I apologize for not uh, having this ready at my disposal, but if we have this number, and I, and I realize it's kind of an apples and oranges, do we have the pool, total pool numbers from the year before last year as well? I, I think you said 2,043 memberships last year. What was it the year before? 2011. If you're saying it was 2,043 last year, so yes, 2012, what was it in 2011? Yeah, there was, you were looking for the drop? I didn't say it was a drop. I just said what was the number. No, no, no there was a drop. We anticipated okay. a 4% drop, and it was closer to 8. Yes. Um, it, taking, trying to work this math out, um, the, the, uh, thinking of it on a per day basis, Mr. Ryan, I come to between 4 and $5, either, either season as we know it or adding $30 for seven days. It still comes out to between 4 and $5 a day on this one particular couple category that I just picked. Can I ask another mathematical so, question? So it's the, this $30 is comparable to the rest of the summer. Okay. On that's, that category. Good, that's useful, thank you. Mr. Bradley? Just uh, kind of following up then in terms of the mathematics that I did before. Um, if it was a expected 4% but actual 8% drop when we raised it by 30% last year, then why are we assuming that if we do another Increase uh, similar order of magnitude that the numbers would stay constant, and if One, it do, and if it doesn't, what would the shortfall be if it, if the drop off was comparable to what we expected last year, not what actually happened? Well, one thing is the 
there, with the discussion at the advisory committee is they, there is some thinking that uh, the, the beaches are not going to be ready for people and there'll be a drop off at the beaches and pe people who normally go to the shore might be looking for an alternative. So that is a potential uh, market. market that we haven't, haven't reached. Um, there may be some uh, spillover from this arrangement we're now going to have with South Orange where we, we've gotten some information from people that they did not join the Maplewood pool because their children hang out with South Orange people. If they do join, <coughs> we will get 50% of that. So that's, that may be a, a slight revenue uh, stream. And uh, I, I, I think the argument that the pool advisory committee is going to make to the, to the membership is that this is not an increase for the same amount of time. This is an increase for an additional amount of time. So they're going to try to get in front of it to argue that mm -hmm. uh, it's more for more, yeah, as opposed to last year, which was much more for the for same. The same. I, yeah, and, uh, that's why I'm saying it's kind of apples and oranges. So, it's, well, it wasn't it's in it. time; it was just mm -hmm. uh, amenities. However, Slarier. the right. survey results, and I don't have them. I don't in front have of them me. in front of me. They were favorable to doing this. Request made it enough right. for them to consider this. There was enough of a, a request for the pool to be open. Oh, it's. Um, I'm sorry. Um, I guess I'm just. A little concerned one of like we mentioned the bump last year uh, there are requests for um, upgrades mm -hmm. that the recreation director made that we specifically said we're not going to do out of the capital because we're going to let the pool revenues pay for it now we're playing with the rates we might drop off, will those revenues still be there? That, that's my concern. Well, first of all, I don't think that they're going to be doing these upgrades this okay. year. Um, this, this, this is a recommendation from the Pool Advisory Committee. So uh, I'll, just to make the process move, I will move that we increase, uh, that we open on Memorial Day and we increase the fee $30 across the board for each membership category. Second. Okay, discussion? Mr. Ryan. Was any consideration given to, you know, instead of $30 across the board, sort of, you know, making it a percentage so that, you know, for example, the senior rate was a little bit smaller increase and that sort of thing? It was not. It was just across the board. And I think it was, it was uh, at the time, you, you can't measure who's going to use it or not use it. And so, and it was just felt to do it across the board, just to take the number and divide it by memberships. I will vote for this because I see it as a comparable day fee, if you will, uh, compared to the rest of the year, at least in one category. Anything else? Uh, procedure, procedural question. Uh, you, you said something before in terms of perhaps doing this as a pilot, as a, as a one year, um, right. by resolution. Um, it, is that an option we could consider as well? Oh, the, the, what I'm trying to get my, my, my question around is in terms of, again, we're assuming the same number. Um, and I realize, you know, what the dollars actually translate into, but I, I'm just concerned that if, if the numbers, I'm making a presupposition, I don't know, it's the, it's the people who are already there who are wanting the extra days, but maybe some of them might, some, there might be some drop off. I mean, there was a drop off last year, yeah. uh, despite the fact that we did some pretty nice things <laughs> last year. Well, I, would be, that'll be I would be fine in amending my motion to make it a pilot for 2013 with an evaluation at the end of the year as to whether or not it should continue and under what conditions. Okay. That seems reasonable. And thing. also remember that the people who are recommending this are yeah. 10 pool users. This is not the township committees. No, no, I understand. I understand. Is, <laughs> these are ten, contrary the, to what m some people yeah, on yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, patch yeah, might think. But I'm just saying uh, the money's is, that comes uh, from. These are the pool users mm -hmm. who are speaking on behalf of other pool users who think that this is a good idea. So, and they have some data to mm -hmm. back it up. So. Well, and I mean, mm -hmm. and I'm just trying to. I'm yeah, sorry, please. I apologize, Kevin. 
No, and I was just, and I was just, they have some data to back it up, and I, and I, but I was just kind of probing into some of the, the, the justification. I just had some questions about some of that. Yeah. So I, the pilot is. Uh, I would say it's it's certainly the case for all the time I've been on the township committee that there's a, a raft of calls and complaints and suggestions. Come Memorial Day weekend, why don't you people open up the pool earlier? Other towns open up their pools. Um, so you know, I, I'm. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm having a little trouble wrapping my head around the, the, the magnitude of the, the charge, although Ms. Leventhal's um, helped me understand that maybe I'm, I'm thinking about it the wrong way. It's probably um, roughly comparable with what we charge for a guest pass. For what? $10 for a guest pass. $10 for a guest pass. $10 for a guest pass. I didn't hear what you said. So it's, what in the ball, it's in the guest, ballpark. Guest, guest pass. Oh, I'm sorry. It's in the guest pass ballpark. Right. Um, so I would say... Given that you've uh, amended your motion to just try it for a year and evaluate it, I, I think I'll probably reluctantly vote yes to go along with it. Yeah, one other thing, just a data point, is South Orange is opening on Memorial Day. So you, your comment about other towns doing it, why can't we? We're going to get a lot of that if we don't do it. So. You can't do guest passes because you have fixed costs that have to be covered. Yeah, this, as we talked about before. Okay. You yeah, you need you need a you need um, yeah. the more I think about it, the more I realize you need some certain revenue stream to be to. able to afford to open. Because you're going to be paying those people. Yeah, <laughs> fixed overhead. Okay, please call the roll. Mr. Brownlee. Yes. Mrs. Larrier. No. Ms. Leventhal. Yes. Mr. Ryan. Yes. Mayor DeLuca. Yes. Passes four to one. Let's do, uh, we have financial aid for pool membership guidelines, Mrs. Larrier. Yes. I don't know how you got stuck with this. But. Well, see, now I get to be the nice guy. You guys get to charge <laughs> more, time. and I get to be the nice guy. Um, our Recreation Department and Welfare Department, uh, back in 2010, uh, a couple moved into Maplewood and then suggested that we have donations given to the township to help supplement uh, <coughs> the pool memberships for those who could not necessarily afford it. Um, this year, uh, Sandra Bartlett and Keith Knudsen of Welfare and Recreation came up with the Pool Pal, well, actually it's always been called Pool Pal, but they've come up with um, guidelines for that program. Um, Mr. Manning distributed this last week, week before last, and along with the Pool Pal chart, um, we did get some questions that were answered. Uh, I didn't, one of the questions that I had was how much money there was and I guess last year there was like 1996 1996 dollars it's donations you don't necessarily know how many how much money is going to come in um, I guess really what we're trying to what I need to do is is I guess I need to get a motion that we adopt this yes we're, we're looking for to formalize the policy that we have right. because we think it's important okay. so are you prepared to make this motion um, I am. However, Kathy, uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Leventhal uh, had some edits for this that she sent to, I guess she sent to all of us. So if we could incorporate those changes. I'm oh, sure. Absolutely. Okay, so we want to incorporate those changes and put it on for approval as uh, by resolution at the next meeting? Is that what you want to do? Yes. Okay. One, uh, just to alert Mr. Manning, one of my uh, items was a question rather than a change. So I'll have to look the email over Thank again. You. And Thank you. You'll send me to, okay. Send me to That's so, uh, Mr. Manning, if you will get that to Mr. Desiderio and we can get it in a resolution form for the next meeting. Yes. Okay. Uh, that is it with our discussion items. We'll move to the consent agenda. Mr. Chair, I move for the adoption of the items on the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Brandley? Yes. Mrs. 
Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. Uh, we're now at our second public comment period. Is there anyone who would like to address the Township Committee? No one appears. We have administrative reports. Mr. Manning? Uh, nothing to report and here for questions. Any questions for Mr. Manning? Okay, Mr. Desiderio. I just have actually a question on what you uh, just did with the pool fees. Uh, when you passed the consent agenda, you adopted the fees, recreation fees for 2013. Uh, so what I'm, what, just so I understand, I'm going to do a resolution that's going to say that the pools on a pilot basis, the pool's going to be open uh, Memorial Day weekend and the two weekends after. I'll designate those and that the, and that the all pool fees are going to be increased by, the, by $30 per, per, uh, per membership group. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Okay, that's all I have. Anything for Mr. Desiderio? Ms. Fritzen? Uh, just one thing, uh, beginning tomorrow, our equipment uh, cameras will be installed in this room, and uh, I expected that to be in for today, but with the holiday and, and some of the equipment not in, it's opted to uh, wait until tomorrow and have a full half uh, to get it up and running. Anything for Ms. Fritzen? We'll now move to reports from elected officials. And then just so everyone knows, after this, we're going back into close to finish our discussions around personnel, legal, and negotiations. Uh, Mr. Brownlee. No report. Ms. Leventhal. I have uh, been attending some of the uh, Black History Month either celebrations or presentations, educational sessions, and suggest that uh, as many residents as possible get out to do that. There's uh, an awful lot of talent in, in Maplewood uh, that is uh, being brought to us during this month and also a lot to learn. So uh, just wanted to mention that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ryan. I have no report, Mayor. Ms. Larrier. No report, Mayor. The mayor has no report. The mayor, oh. mayor has no report. The ma oh, I'm sorry. I do. I do. Imagine I do. I'm my sorry. Oh. Imagine no, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't blame me. This is Miss Fritzen. She. Uh, I failed to uh, to do uh, a moment of silence. I'm going to ask for it now. We could sit. Uh, the passing away of retired firefighter Captain Clyde Ronnie. He served on the Maplewood Fire Department from 1963 to 1989. 26 years. We we'll just have a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Okay, we need a motion to go into closed or? Yes. Yes. We'll do it right here. Let's do it right here. Sure. Uh, where is Chapter 8 of the Open Public, public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Laws of 1975, permits exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances? And whereas this public body is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, now therefore be resolved by the Township Committee, Township Maplewood, in the County of Essex, State of New Jersey, the public shall be excluded from discussion of any action upon the hearing specified subject matter. The general nature of the subject matter discussed as follows. Uh, personnel, uh, negotiations, and legal. And, uh, legal. Yep. It's anticipated at this time that the above stated subject matter made public. This resolution should take effect immediately. Moved. Second. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca. Yes, thank you very much. We'll be back out here on March 5th.